Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. Ha <laughs> ha! We're back today with my midday Q&A video where I've also upgraded my camera equipment. You might notice that the camera is moving back and forth all by itself. It's much more stable than it used to be. I gotta say, it's kind of clever. It has been expensive though. I ask that you, you know, click on that little duckshit.net link that you see up there, which is my Patreon account, and uh, throw me a bone. I'd really appreciate it because this YouTube stuff is kind of getting expensive and it's not paying me a whole lot. I'm, I'm not a rich man by any means. Really, I'm not. I got this new camera equipment and when I opened up the box, guess what? Yeah, if you guessed it was missing parts, you are absolutely correct. I had to cobble together cables to make it work because they didn't ship all the wires in the box. So once again, I got f***ed in 2018 on another box that got shipped to me, which was not adequately packed with everything that was supposed to be in it. The last couple hours I've spent packing this thing and trying to figure out how it worked and managed to put together a couple of cables that made it work exactly that way. And it seemed to do the trick. It was also lacking instruction manual. You know, we've been down that road before too. And uh, it came with no instruction manual whatsoever. So I was forced to just guess as to how this thing is supposed to assemble and I managed to figure it out after you know a little bit of cursing and swearing and calling it a piece of junk but anyway um, I might be sending it back or I might be talking with the manufacturer to see if I can get the parts from them otherwise I'm going the refund route and I'm gonna get the money back on this and I'll go for a different product because they've already pissed me off and I don't like being pissed off when people ship me the wrong parts that just really aggravates me to no end you know I have specifically requested sometimes exact part numbers and yet consistently this year people have f***ed me they just shipped me the wrong things and and then you know i guess ups fedex and and the postal service are making a fortune here because nobody can get anything right so you have to ship things two three four times or in the case of my my um work experience parts have been shipped six times and overnighted i might add and you know what that adds up to and that happens just way too often way too often please Please like, comment, and subscribe. Pluck that little dingle belly that you see down there next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. Don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles of VW Garage group page. There's always something going on up there. We talk about my projects as well as other people's projects. If you have a question or something you'd like to share, that's probably the best place to do it. So thanks you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. All right, one of the first things I wanted to show here is my Type 3 linkage that I put together for my carburetors. These are the uh, Delorto FRD carburetors. And this is a Weber ICT linkage from uh, CB Performance. This is the one that they sent me the wrong parts the first time and they corrected it and sent me out the uh, correct parts at a later date. But anyway, these things go together pretty well. Um, it's kind of an interesting design. Uh, a little tricky to get together because the language and the wordage, the verbiage um, in the documentation is, is just, I don't know, weird. It's not a step-by-step -step instruction. It's like, if you're sure you know what you're doing, then proceed here. It's like, what? Who says that in a manual? <laughs> I don't know who wrote this thing. It's very matter-of-fact. But anyway, I pushed my way through it, doing what I knew what to do based on working with carburetor linkages in the past. And I assembled this thing. And there was a lot of parts to it. I mean, it just... Uh, probably a hundred parts. All these little nuts and bolts and screws and washers and hind joints and... Um, Reverse threaded nuts, and I mean, a lot of nonsense. Oh, by the way, reverse threaded nut is gold. The standard nut is silver. We seem to have a pattern or a theme here that's going on. Uh, reverse threaded stuff seems to be coming in gold. Remember, we experienced that over with the clevis joints over on the um, Kaffir bar that I installed over the summer, and that ran into a problem. Now, I also had a situation where the, uh, <laughs> the CV joint covers were... Um, gold on one side and silver on the other. Now those are not threaded in reverse in any way, but it is kind of odd that the uh, reverse threaded nuts are gold and the standard ones are not. Anyway, um, we got this put together here. Now this linkage was not designed for Delorto FRD carburetors. They were meant for Weber ICTs. So I had to do some modifications, particularly to the inside of the air cleaner uh, bases in here. And I'm going to show that to you right now if I can get it off rather easily. I might have to actually uh, put the camera down here. It's a little tricky. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to pop it off a screwdriver. But we're going to show you down inside of here exactly what we did. Okay, I've got those wing nuts and those washers off of here. So we take off the air cleaner top, and I'm going to pull off the filter here. And we're going to look down inside at the filter base. Now you'll notice that there's screws. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. Now those screws did not line up, or I should say the holes did not line up with the carburetors, because this is, of course, designed for Weber ICT carburetors. So what I had to do is I had to use some Aluma Weld to weld closed the old holes that were here because of course you don't want to be sucking in dirt and bugs and all kinds of just junk into the uh, carburetor air cleaners and I had to redrill new holes for where the FRD carburetors have to go in there and I did a little bit of milling over here so that way it gave me a bit of a notch so I could drop that screw straight down into place and the Luma weld turned out real nice and what a Luma weld is and I forget what kind of metal it's made from I'll put it up here on the bottom of the screen I'll look it up while I'm editing the video but it's kind of like a very high temperature solder and it sticks very very well to aluminum so I did a little bit of cleaning up and polishing to the aluminum here these are um, taper headed screws and these were taper headed holes here so what I did was I threw on the other side and made a tapered hole also. So there's a tapered hole on the top and the bottom. I clamped a piece of flat bar to it made from steel. And Aluma Weld does not like sticking to steel. Then I came over here and melted the Aluma Weld into the hole. And what that did is the hole, if I were to make a bisection of it, shaped like an hourglass. So even if this stuff didn't stick properly to the aluminum, it's not going anywhere because it's a slug. It's actually going to be stuck in that location. And the temperature to melt that stuff, I mean, is a lot higher than anything that a Volkswagen engine will reproduce. So I think I think it's perfectly safe where it's at. It's not going to be melting or coming out of there. And I'll show a little bit more of that in tonight's video where I'm actually going to install this whole apparatus here. So watch for that video tonight. And I'm hoping it goes up tonight anyway because I have not finished installing them as you can see here. And I don't know what other problems I'm going to run into along the way. <laughs> but I had to modify the air cleaner as you see. And I got that mounted on the FRD carburetor. And these, like I said, weren't designed. The, um, the other thing was is in here where it fits over the top of the carburetor, the ICTs are actually slightly smaller than the FRDs were. So in order for this to slide over the FRD, I actually had to chuck this in my lathe and very carefully shave out what was um, 0.3 millimeters. So 0.15 millimeters on either side. And I don't know what that is in inches, you guys. You guys can do the math. I'm not even going to mess with that. So you play with it all you want. Make all the comments you want about it. <laughs> it didn't matter to me. I turned into the lathe, and I mean, I could barely get the chuck on it, but I got it centered, got it shaved, and the sucker fits down over the carburetor so perfectly. It's a little snug, just a little bit, but it pushes right down on it perfectly, and it takes two hands to hold it straight to make sure that it goes on. So this thing just turned out perfectly, and I did exactly the same thing over on the other side here so this turned out really really good and I'm excited to get this thing installed and you might be asking you know well why did you upgrade to this linkage didn't you have old linkage that worked properly well the problem with the old linkage that I had is that it would um, just regularly go out of sync it would it would be great for it for a day maybe even for a couple hours sometimes you know I'd be driving from here let's say to the car show in Panama City and I had to stop two or three times to actually resync the carburetors it was that bad the car would just start I'd just bucking and kicking and spitting and backfire it was just it was terrible then I go in there and I'd put the little snail gauge on here and the snail gauge on the other side and open the throttle up a little bit and I would be getting you know improper vacuum readings between the two carburetors so I'd have to make an adjustment in the linkage until I got them even again drive down the road and it's fine but but then after going, you know, some, some distance, it's always some random distance. Sometimes it's five miles. Sometimes it's five days, you know, five days of driving, you know, hundreds of miles. But anyway, I could not make any sense as to why the thing was constantly being knocked out of sync. It was just in some really sorry shape. Plus the problem I had with the air cleaners, the air cleaners didn't have solid tops like this. They were just rubber. And what happens when rubber gets hot, it gets, it gets squishy. And the carburetor would actually suck the air cleaners down on top of the carburetor. And when it got to a certain RPM, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Volkswagens usually shoot a fog up off the top of the carburetor. So it would actually push the air cleaner back away from it. So when you hit a certain RPM and it would start to spit is when it would push the air cleaner back up and all of a sudden the car would take off like a rocket. But when you're about that, let's say quarter to half throttle, that's when it would generally suck it down. And it was just, it was terrible. It was the most annoying thing ever when it would happen. And you know what it would do. That's when it would buck and spit and act just like the carburetors are out of sync again. So those are the two problems that I had. And the other reason I wanted to upgrade to this linkage, and this is probably one of the biggest ones. You see the mixture screws down here? There's your mixture screw. There's your idle screw. They, when I'm looking down at the engine, are very, very easy to reach. And the one on the right side here is also pretty easy to reach because it's right front and I could easily get my right hand 
right here onto it, no problem. These screws were formerly on the opposite side because the other linkage liked to go around the back side of this carburetor. So the whole carburetor was turned around 180 degrees. And what that meant to me, you can't get through with your hand this way. You can't because here's the coil, here's the generator, here's your distributor. There's no room to go in there to play with the adjuster. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to get your right hand, and this is where you wish you had more than one joint in your wrist, because you can't get around there to reach the damn mixture screw. It was just out of reach. You see where my fingers are here? You could just barely glide your finger on it. That was always really aggravating to me, and turning the, uh, <laughs> turning the idle screw was a blind thing. You just reach around there, and you put your screwdriver, and you just keep turning until maybe it, it catches and it starts to hook up. And then hopefully you're holding your vacuum gauge on properly and straight, and you get the adjustment right the first time. Pain in the ass. No longer is that going to be an issue, because now everything is front. I can reach everything from the front hand side. That was very, very critical to me. Now, I did pay a premium for this linkage system. In fact, some of my friends said I paid too much for it. But, you know, you guys are cheap Volkswagen owners, and I want a car that drives properly, and I don't mind paying for a good product. So this is the reason why I, I got this linkage here. And I'm very, very excited to put it back on. So hopefully tomorrow we're going to get this thing assembled and get it all put back together. The video is actually going to look like it was a one-day video, but in reality it was actually two days because when I started working with the, uh, the bases here, I expected two of the screw holes to line up. And when that didn't happen, it turned out it was back to the drawing board. And I had to do some cutting and drilling and measuring and milling. And you know, you know the drill. It takes more time when you have to start fiddling with things. So I brought it inside because today it's, it was just above freezing. Finally not raining, by the way. It's been raining for like days again. Just days in a row with temperatures just above freezing. Not a good time to be outside. So I did the best that I could with what you got. And that's what I put together here. And I'm very, very excited for this. This, uh, this to me looks really just looks really solid um i've seen these things on many cars before and as far as i know everybody raves about these linkages and says that they are the best so we're gonna see if they actually are the best by putting it on my car so anyways let's go ahead and step outside we're gonna have a, a discussion a quick talk yeah look at this everything fell down and it's all wonky that's what happens when they're not bolted the intake manifold <laughs> Anyway, we're going to get that cleaned up, and now we're going to go step outside, and we're going to talk about Eleanor's hatch. There's a new discovery that one of my viewers had made and shared with me, we're going to talk about what he discovered and uh, how that relates to Eleanor's hatch. So let's go ahead and step outside and see what we got. All right, before we step outside, you know my YouTube channel talks a lot about do's and don'ts, and one of the things that I don't do is leave things a mess. So I just, I'm not an OCD person, but I didn't want to leave this thing just a pile of shit. And I'm the only one who lives here, except for, you know, two, two ducks and a turtle. I just, I couldn't leave this thing just haphazardly thrown about. So anyway, it's back together and it's ready to go. I know where all the parts are at. You know, nothing's being stressed, nothing's being potentially damaged or messed up. It's ready to go for tomorrow. Let's go ahead and step outside and check out Eleanor. Okay, for those of you that don't know, Eleanor is my 1956 Beetle that was taken by a hurricane and completely destroyed. I rebuilt it, but yada, yada, yada. If you're brand new to the channel, you don't probably know what I'm doing, but I did mention that there's a hatch. And this is a hatch from my 1973 to 79 Volkswagen bus. And what I'm about to do is I'm about to install it right here in the rear package area. And the reason for that is, is because it gives me wonderful access to the clutch cable, the starter bolt, CV joints, uh, filling the transmission fluid. A great place to do it, as well as um, clutch cable, throttle cable. All that's accessible through this hole. I can change out the starter. You name it, I can get it through this hole. And that makes all the difference in the world working on this car. I don't have to jack it up. I don't have to pull the wheels off, you know, all that crap. But I'm actually not the first one to do it, and I, I kind of figured that. Because actually, when I go back almost 20 years, my dad put a piece of plywood back in, in my Beetle because it was completely rotted out. So he made a flange to go lay around, and we made a piece of plywood that dropped in there that opened up that entire area. And when I replaced the starter, I said, hey, Dad, you know, that's kind of cool. Let's not put metal in there. We're going to stick with the plywood. But it was brought to my attention by 5150MX, and I am hope I'm saying that channel correctly. We'll put his little YouTube link here on the bottom. He told me that earlier Beetles... And he said it was like 5152. Already had a hatch similar to this in the back. And so I asked him to provide me with some details and he shared me with a link to the Samba where some people had some wonderful pictures of this rear area from an early Beetle. And I believe it was, yeah, it was a split window Beetle. Pre-Zwitter did have a rear hatch back there and it was small. I believe it was about uh, 8 inches by 8 inches. It might have even been a little bit bigger than that, not much, but it was square. And it sat in the middle and it allowed you to fill the transmission because the transmission filler was actually up on top rather than on the side as they did later probably when about the same time as they did away with these panels. But 
The funny thing is, is Eleanor's original rear end, there was a weird flange that was welded on the inside, but the top stamping wasn't punched away for a hole for a hatch. That was actually the receiver that was still in production on the Beetle, despite them not stamping out the hole. And that's the funny thing about Volkswagens. Sometimes they leave stuff behind. <laughs> Case in point, this is a late model door with an early model top. I actually made this door, but I used the linkage in it for a early model Beetle. The early model Beetle linkage had bolts here, later model had the bolts here. So what I had to do is I had to essentially weld in two nuts, but the funny thing was the stampings were already in the door. They were already in the right spot. Why? And I never planned on going back to the earlier model stuff, but because it was already in the stamping and they never decided to modify it, I was able to just weld those in there and I got the handle in exactly the stock location. So <laughs> just one of those things. The Volkswagen sometimes left stuff behind. There were some exceptions. Thank you, 5150MX. I hope I said that name correctly. And I hope you're not burying any Beatles anytime soon. He, uh, <laughs> he tricked his entire YouTube audience. He had a, a early 60s Beetle. I think he was trying to sell it. Nobody was buying it. So he got his um, boy uh, to answer a question. He says, what are we going to do with this Beetle today? And his boy said, we're going to bury it. <laughs> And he started digging a hole, and it really looked like he was going to do it. I didn't know what he was doing. I'm like, oh, is this some kind of stunt? You know, I mean, I saw another YouTube channel bury a bunch of cars for a year and dug them up to see if they can get them running. But I didn't think he was actually going to do it. But uh, it was funny, nonetheless. He made me laugh. So anyways, check him out. 5150MX. Give him a, a subscription, you know. Give me a thumb on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to me either. Duckman Cycles VW Garage over on the Facebook page. We have a group page where we talk about all kinds of different projects, as well as Eleanor and the Type 3, which I'll be working on for those linkages that you see. It's probably going to be tonight's midnight video, so look for that. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I think I said that already. So anyways, I think that's it for now. I mean, it's been quite a talky-talky video. I had a lot to share. So thanks very much for watching, you guys. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Adieu!